Dharmakshetre Kurukshetre that is a line that is always referred to when they're talking about Bhagavad Gita so this is not just a war between brothers or family this is a war between dharma and adharma righteousness and malevolence and krishna takes the side of dharma when everything is set everything is ready they are about to wage a war arjuna just sees his family members on the other side and he just collapses with grief and he starts contemplating his decision he starts questioning krishna what the right thing is to do a sankarshan joshi trip hello ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another sankarshan joshi trip this is a very special episode because this is the first ever episode of the bhagavad gita series yes you heard it right this episode is the first episode of the bhagavad gita series which covers the first chapter of the bhagavad gita series which is the yoga of arjuna's grief i have always wanted to read the gita to understand the gita and have my own perception of it i never got a chance to completely finish it every time i start i just end it abruptly or in between i never got a chance to finish it so me doing this episode is <laughs> is a form of commitment that i am giving to myself that i am going to finish reading gita and this podcast when i am talking it it provides a space for my thoughts to move freely and it creates my own perception bhagavad gita and the lord krishna have always fascinated me because i have heard few lines from the bhagavad gita and they just stayed in my head the weight of the profundity and the wisdom that bhagavad gita has to offer is immeasurable so there are two aspects of this bhagavad gita one is aspect of god like your belief in god and faith in god and the second aspect is the philosophy that bhagavad gita has to offer so regardless of if you believe in god or if you don't believe in god it doesn't matter for us to understand interpret the philosophy is that is being told in the bhagavad gita bhagavad gita is a part of mahabharata and mahabharata in and itself is a universe there are multiple characters and each character has their own story and this makes it a web of multiple characters so understanding and perceiving mahabharata in its entirety is a close to impossible task it can also have multiple interpretations it doesn't mean that one interpretation is wrong and one interpretation is better there are multiple perspectives and we get to choose to read all the perspectives and create our own perspective so i wanted to say this as a disclaimer before we get into the first chapter of bhagavad gita bhagavad gita which is song of the god it is the conversation between krishna and arjuna that takes place during the war between pandavas and kauravas when i when i thought of doing this series i was very 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 intimidated because there are a lot of characters there are a lot of stories there is a lot of things that happen in the mahabharata a thought stuck me like will i able to perceive this will i able to finish this when i found this bhagavad gita this for the people who are not able to see the book it's an english translation translated by author osborne and professor g v kulkarni and this bhagavad gita book was bought in ramana maharshi's ashram so if you don't know who ramana maharshi is he is one of the greatest yogis uh of india and this book was bought there so when i was going through this book right this is a very simple translation without any interpretation so it's straight up translation to english 
and when i was reading through this it gave me a hope that you know bhagavad gita might not be as complex this bhagavad gita series is the pursuit of simplifying bhagavad gita because that's how i perceive it and i hope even you guys feel the same way as you guys join me as i uncover my own perspectives of the bhagavad gita so before we get started with the first chapter just to give context of why this war is happening there is a war that is taking place in the battlefield of kuru the kurukshetra between pandavas and kauravas so pandavas father and kauravas father are brothers kauravas refuse to give a part of the kingdom to the pandavas which is rightfully theirs so they refuse to give it duryodhana says he won't give a piece of land size of a needle to the pandavas kauravas and pandavas arjuna and duryodhana both go to krishna asking for krishna's help and arjuna gently sits at the feet of lord krishna and duryodhana sits on a pedestal next to krishna and krishna has his eyes closed when they both arrived and as soon as krishna opens his eyes he sees arjuna arjuna from the pandava and duryodhana from the kaurava they both come asking for krishna's help and krishna gives them two options one gets krishna on their side krishna's wisdom and krishna's knowledge and his and him and the second gets krishna's army duryodhana gets to make the first choice even though krishna offers arjuna because arjuna was who krishna saw first to make the choice but arjuna gives the choice to duryodhana because he knows that duryodhana came first so duryodhana chooses army arjuna now has krishna on his side on the pandava side dharmakshetre kurukshetre that is a line that is always referred to when they are talking about bhagavad gita so this is not just a war between brothers or family this is a war between dharma and adharma righteousness and malevolence this is the war of that and krishna takes the side of dharma in this book before they get started with the first chapter there is a short intro that beautifully says why was the battlefield chosen as the stage for arjuna's instruction this choice has a tremendous literary effect but the explanation goes beyond that it shows vividly that though inner warfare is to be waged on the battlefield of life not through withdrawal from life krishna might have instructed arjuna in a cave far from distractions but no instead he is chosen a setting where the teaching is immediately to be put into effect by combining the most strenuous outer activity with the right attitude of mind so i have exactly read as it is written in the book earlier as i was talking this is a war between dharma and adharma righteousness and malevolence so this intro talks about the inner war there is a internal battle that always happens in human beings right between doing the right thing and tempted to do the wrong thing so this is also a war of that i like that interpretation the first chapter is yoga of arjuna's grief so in the first ever chapter what happens is that dhritarashtra asks sanjaya dhritarashtra is the father of the kauravas dhritarashtra is blind and he asks sanjaya who has a supernatural power divya drushti he has a supernatural power which means he has a vision he can just close his eyes and he gets the vision of what is happening without actually being there so sanjaya starts narrating what is happening in the battlefield to dhritarashtra so initially sanjaya starts talking about the armies of both the parties pandavas and kauravas so he starts describing the the army of the kauravas who are all a part of it and then 
later on he goes on describing the army of the pandavas and who all are the part of it and then as he is describing that he also talks about the the drums being beaten and the conch is being blown as a as a symbol that you know the war is about to start krishna is the charioteer of arjuna's chariot so arjuna asks krishna to take him to a place where he can see the kauravas army like he wants to go in between the battlefield and hearing this krishna takes arjuna there and the arjuna as he saw his fathers his grandfathers his teachers his uncle his brothers sons grandson he started seeing all the people who are the part of the kauravas army and like i said initially kauravas and pandavas are cousins arjuna sees his own family his relatives on the other side the thought that he will be fighting his own family just stuck a chord in arjuna's heart a great compassion came over him and to krishna he describes what how he is feeling and he says you know how his limbs are dropping his mouth is parched his body is trembling and and his hair stands on end he goes on describing how he is feeling when he sees his own family on the other side he starts to describe even more by saying how his skin is burning and his mind is reeling and he can't stand that he also adds that you know he sees ill omens okay shiva like that that's what he calls krishna and he starts contemplating his decision of wh- what exactly is he doing there he says to krishna that i desire no victory even if i win for whose sake am i winning like no matter how much wealth that i gain to the people on the other side are his teachers his fathers sons grandfather his uncles he do not wish to kill his family members what is the war even worth is winning the war even uh, even worth so this war is taking place to regain a land that was rightfully theirs and he says is this earth the land worth me killing my own family members his own like my own teachers my grandfathers my uncles my relatives is it worth that what joy would it give him by killing his own family members that's what arjuna says krishna he also questions how can he be happy by killing his own family members even though kaurava's mind could be filled with greed and cruelty shouldn't we have enough wisdom to turn away from this sin so that's what he questions krishna he also adds on destruction of our own family the dharma perishes and then adharma overtakes the whole family so dharma technically means the part of the path of righteousness right and adharma is the opposite of that so he questions krishna on destruction of won't this set the course of adharma by killing our own family and when adharma prevails the family becomes corrupt the entire family to further generations become corrupt and then this brings the whole family down he also adds on saying like how this would bring bad fate to the upcoming generation he also asks what would eventually come out of this family when dharma is subverted he also sees how much of a sin it would be to kill our own family members for for the sake of dominion land kingdom and wealth this thought brings him down to a point where he says just hand the weapon to the sons of dhritarashtra i will i will go and hand over myself and they can just kill me and get over with this entire thing having spoken this arjuna throws his bow and arrow and he just collapses with grief so that's about it ladies and gentlemen for the first chapter so first chapter talks about arjuna's grief when everything is set everything is ready and everyone is good to go and they are about to wage a war 
Arjuna just sees his family members on the other side and he just collapses with grief and he starts contemplating his decision he starts questioning krishna what the right thing is to do is killing our own family members right he says walking away from this and giving up on the land or the kingdom for whatever they was rightfully there is giving up on that if that could save their own family members then he would gladly do that this is a very interesting chapter because it sets foundation to what is going to come next so sanjaya describes this entire thing to dhritarashtra so sanjaya is narrating this to dhritarashtra going back to what i said initially about waging war between dharma and adharma that happens internally in human beings the war between the right thing to do and the wrong thing to do we are always tempted to give up on fighting back towards the negative force we always give in to that negative force and just go ahead with that right so let me give a random example let's take addiction let's take alcoholism or let's take pornography or let's take any form of substance substance abuse or could be you're addicted to sex or any form of addiction or any form of negative energy there is a part of us that is pulling a pulling away from the negative force which is asking us not to do it a part of our brain knows that that is the wrong thing to do but we always give in right so when i read this first chapter it is not as literally as i said but when i when i read the first chapter what i perceived was as a human i have these moments where i don't want to fight where i feel very demotivated i don't want to do the right thing i just give in and then do the to do to the negative thing and and then our mind tries to find justification to why we are doing the wrong thing right so arjuna is filled with grief and he's contemplating his decision and he wants to give up and he creates this whole points he asks this whole questions justifying why he thinks giving up is the right thing to do similarly when we want to do something that is wrong and when we are fighting should i do that or should i not do that we always create justifications and reasonings to continue doing the wrong thing right like we need justification to do that so that's what i feel when i read this chapter we all go through these phases where we don't want to do something but then we end up doing it and when we end up doing it we have a whole list of justifications of why we do that and our brain is wired to do that right because it would be hard to live with ourselves if we don't convince our mind to follow our heart or convince our heart to follow the mind it would be hard to live with ourselves so we will have to create environment where whatever we do is justified that's about it ladies and gentlemen for the first chapter of the bhagavad gita series i hope you guys liked the doing this episode as much as i did please do mention in the comments below what do you guys think about this episode <laughs>